Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about uh, installing and configuring Snort and what Snort is. Uh, Snort is an intrusion detection and an intrusion prevention system that can be uh, installed on top of uh, PFSense. Uh, and I'll show you how to do it. Um, by the way, I just updated this dashboard with uh, you have various widgets here, whatever you need. Maybe you want to see OpenVPN if clients are connected or anything like that. I just opened here with traffic and what kind of interfaces I have and the system information. So now we don't have Snort uh, running yet. So 24% of uh, memory is in use and the CPU is uh, idling at around two to 3%. So that will change as soon as Snort uh, will be installed and all those rule settings will be loaded to this machine because it's quite, um, it's quite heavy on the, on the memory usage. So keep that in mind. Uh, in this particular tutorial, um, PFSense is running inside a virtual box and I assigned only one gigs of RAM to it. So this is probably not enough, but we'll see how far we can get. Uh, without any further ado, um, Snort doesn't come standard uh, because this kind of still is kind of a clean install, but we need to fetch it ourselves by going to Packet Manager uh, here you have an overview of the installed packages and the available packages. You go here and you basically just search Snort. So this is the version. Snort is an open source network intrusion prevention and detection system, IDS, IPS, combining the benefits of signature protocol and anomaly based inspection. This is a really, really neat feature. So confirm it and it will install and grab the package over the internet. Um, sometimes this will take a while. So the installation of the Snort package is complete. Um, okay, fine. Uh, great. Uh, you can find it here under services and then we go to Snort. And here you have a uh, Snort interfaces. Uh, global settings, updates, alerts, blocks, pass lists. But we first need to set up set it up on an interface, and that's going to be the WAN interface. Uh, so enable this interface. We use the WAN, not LAN. Description, just keep it at WAN, or you can fill in your own description here. Uh, alert settings, set alerts to the system log. Uh, send, Snort will send alerts to the firewall system log. Default, it's not checked. Block settings, okay. Um, I would, I would, uh, turn this on. Yes. Uh, it will uh, create a lot of noise and intrusion detection system will create a lot of noise. So you will have big logs. Um, but to just to determine how effective the rules are that you will uh, later, um, implement because out of the box, it's, it's a lot of tweaking. You want to see what kind of uh, logs the system produces and on, on, yeah, on that kind of knowledge you can uh, fine tune the system. So I would check this box. Um, let's see, enable packet capture. No, I would keep it like this. Search method. Okay, save. Then we go to WAN categories, WAN rules, custom rules. Let's see the global settings. This is this is where it gets interesting. So Snort is an in, uh, intrusion detection and an intrusion prevention system. Um, the power of this package is really in the rules. And what are rules? Um, rules are kind of um, attack signatures, right? It's like every attack um, at a certain port with a certain protocol, uh, has a unique set of signatures, uh, and you can you can make sure that that will be downloaded. So this way, you can register for free rules here. I will show you. So you can you can sign up. Um, just create an account here, and you will get a, a OINC code. Uh, and you need this code to be able to be identified uh, for Snort as a user, as a unique user. Uh, and you need this OIN code just to be able to download these uh, uh, rules that come from this community. 
uh, you either have the, the free registered user rules or you have the paid ones uh, if you, for instance, run uh, inside a business that have more critical um, assets that needs to be protected. And you see um, these prices are not very cheap, but this is great technology, guys, I'm telling you. So if you sign up for an account, then you can set in here the Oink Master code and this will enable you to, uh, yeah, to download those kind of rules. So we also have the GPL community rules, tick that box as well. Um, the emergency threats, ET rules, tick this box as well. Or if you have ET Pro, you have an account, you can uh, here click this one. Enable open app ID, open app ID detectors, uh, it's about uh, applications. Uh, let's see, update interval. Uh, this is not good because then you will never get new rules. Um, I would, I would daily have a check and you can, for instance, specify, uh, five o'clock in the morning, just before the working day, basically, or whatever time you want. What's what, yeah, what would fit you best? Um, remove blocked host interval. Please select the amount of time you would like host to be blocked. Uh, select the day. So for instance, if uh, something happens on your network based on the rule set looks shady, then this um, client that uh, or host uh, cannot uh, connect to your network for, for a day. You can also set it 15, 30 minutes. It really depends on what kind of environment you're running it. Uh, but let's say for, for instance, you use it at home as your, uh, as your firewall IDS IPS, I would select one day. So save. Updates, so it's not enabled. It's never been downloaded. So that's oh yeah, I'm not sure if I can do this because I, I didn't fill on the Oink code here. Uh, but if you do have an Oink code, I do have one. I can copy paste it just to show you. But then you are able to update these rules. Now it will probably not be able to update anything because I didn't uh, open, I didn't copy paste the Oink uh, master code there. You really need to set up an account. Then you can download these rules. I'll close it for now. You have alerts and a block list. And I have this image from a live environment. This is what you will actually see when traffic runs through it. So you see what kind of protocol has been used, UDP, TCP, what the source IP is, and the destination IP is my own IP address. That's why I, uh, yeah, here I, I, I removed it. Um, you can su suppress this one to the to a whitelist or to the suppression list if this is a false positive basically uh you can add it and this shouldn't pop up anymore here you see mesh attack so it can be anything and uh it's only uh, been identified based on a specific rule so i hope that makes sense um these signatures, those are the rules, those attack signatures. That's what you will download in PFSense. So let's see what else. Here we here have pass lists. Uh, we can suppress IPs. We have IP lists. Uh, let's go to the Snore interface. So you see, we just set it up. Um, we click this and then we start snored on this interface. At this moment is disabled. So now it will load. It is loading right now. You get this uh, icon here. We'll go back to see if I can show you more later. Just a second. Uh, we go back to the main page. All right. Um, now we see memory in use a little bit higher. <laughs> But th those rules haven't been loaded even yet. I don't even think I can. You you need at least four gigs just to be safe if you use this in a live environment ma with many clients because those rules, there are thousands and thousands of lines of code that you have to uh, load into the memory basically. So let's see if we have another dashboard here. Do we have snort sensors? Do I look over it? Interface firewall logs, for instance. We can add a new widget here, and then you have an overview of what's happening. 
And this is actually when you go to the alerts, which you saw earlier, you have an overview of this. And this is from a live environment, but at this moment uh, in my virtual machine, no traffic is running through. So here you have some firewall logs. Okay, snored alerts. You will see this in a live environment. Let's go back to snored. So we go to the global settings and, okay, it hasn't been saved. You need this, this code. So here you see an overview of the installed rule sets on this very moment. We so have the Snort subscriber rule set, uh, GPL, emerging threats. Um, you can add many more of these lists and they will be frequently updated by a, by a very big community. Um, and it's totally free and it's, it's fantastic. But I have to just warn you uh, here with alerts, or blocked you can see what's happening and why are certain things blocked and you can suppress IP addresses uh, port numbers uh, things like this uh, because out of the box you will see sometimes things will not work I remember in the beginning I could uh, visit YouTube and at a certain moment uh, then a video wouldn't play anymore I had to go through this uh, list here and then I see the IP and I, I can I can look up with this one. I can look up and I see, oh, this is this IP connected to uh, YouTube.com, the domain. And when I suppress it and I save it, then it works again. So um, you have to do some testing. You have to do some testing and you have to uh, be uh, aware that uh, on the on the network, things will happen that you are not uh, not going to, you know, you, you didn't expect that. But it's always easy to go back and um, we go to the Snort interface and we turn it off again, right? Uh, if you have time, then you can sit down here and people in the house or in the office can just go ahead and you will, you will see what's happening what's uh, on the network and you can suppress certain IPs. Um, but it takes time to make sure that these uh, settings are fine because you're going to get a whole bunch of rules, all right? So here, these are all the basics. The updates of the rule sets. It said it's a success, but it didn't fetch anything yet. You can force updates as well. This will take a while, but you need the code, which I said before. Alerts blocked, the pass list, the suppress list, the IP list, SID management, um, enable automatic management of rule state and content using configuration lists. Uh, there's a whole other things that are possible here. Um, log sizes, retention of logs, the log uh, limits and sizes of MBs. Logging is really something that you need in the beginning, just to make sure that all the false positives will be out of this system before um, you can really see its value. And again, going back to this, um, this is just happening. You see the time, it's it's not hap happening every minute, but it really depends on what kind of traffic is is going through there. Uh, in this live environment, Snort is already running for I think three years, so most of the bugs are out there. But you have to realize that these lists will be updated every twenty four or forty eight hours, depending on your own needs, and it can introduce some bugs again. So just keep that in mind. This is one of the most um, uh, extensive packages inside of PFSense. I hope this was uh, was clear um, on how to set it up and where you need to look at. Of course, you set it up on WAN uh, because it is at the edge of the network. It is the uh, the WAN port that goes to the internet, and all the attacks will land on the WAN port and try to go to the LAN. Uh, so you set it up here at WAN. Most important, get the code, subscribe, and enable all these rules. You can set it up um, and. Again, if things are not working uh, the way you want it, you can always stop it and then later on, based on this block and alert list, suppress certain IPs. I hope that was clear. If you have any questions for me, uh, please let me know and we try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching this video and we hope to see you guys in the next one.